Have you ever wondered what people say when they talk about you when you're not around? Do you care? Hmm? My name is Ian Curry and this is Thinking Out Loud. Come on, let me tell you what I think. Growing up in a large family, there were enough of us that someone always had the dirt on one of the others. I know how the lamp got broken and I'm telling Dad. And it would usually be me saying, don't you dare. <laughs> the trouble was, once the secret was out, you never really knew when someone would repeat it and then you'd be in trouble. Of course, I could easily have put an end to it all by telling my father I'd broken whatever it was this time in the first place. Hmm. Now, the work I do is highly scrutinised. Inspectors of one sort or another often come to see what I'm getting up to. Since I often spend up to six weeks with some of the crew I train, it's not unusual to have more than one inspector visit in that time. To get the attention of larger classes I teach, I introduce the crew to a click response. It's easy enough. I hold my arms up and only put them down when the room is silent and everyone is looking my way with their arms up also. Once the whole room is silent and everyone is facing me with their arms up, I lower my hands and at that point, everyone knows the sequence of moves and clicks and a clap. I expect before I move on. Yes, I know it's a little strange, but nevertheless, that's what I do. Recently, a new inspector came along to visit. As he entered the room, he raised his arms and waited. And after a few seconds, the room was silent and every arm was raised. Down went his arms and... Click, stomp, stomp, slap, slap, clap, was the response. Ooh. The inspector then turned to me, grinned, before settling down to do what he was there to do. Hmm, I loved it. But then, as I set tasks for the new crew to do, I wondered, how do you know to do that? Hmm. This particular inspector had never been in my class before. So he had never seen the routine. Clearly, one of his colleagues had been talking about me. What else had they been saying, I wondered. Was it all good, or were they back to make sure I was behaving myself? Was I in trouble? <laughs> in this instance, of course, I was pleased that we were having a little fun together, and my unusual ways had been noteworthy enough there have been a talking point. <laughs> I do hope that's all they had to talk about that particular day. But do I care? Do I worry about what people might be saying when I'm not there? It would take a very strong personality to truly not care at all. After all, we all want people to think well of us and not be talking behind our backs, don't we? There's a lovely moment where Jesus and his disciples are walking along and he asks them, Who do people say I am? Now, I don't think Jesus would have been worried about people talking about him. But still, take a look at what happens next. Well, they replied, and I can picture them squirming a little and they would be shooting glances back and forth. Had he overheard them chattering amongst themselves? Was this a test? Did Jesus really want to know? Or did he already have a very good idea what people were saying? This is the moment where Inspector Jesus has come along and raised his arms and he's waiting for a response, isn't it? Hmm. Well, they replied, 
Some say you're John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say you're one of the other prophets. Rather an evasive answer, isn't it? Non-committal at best. Jesus doesn't let them off the hook. He gives them a moment, and I expect they're wondering if their answers were good enough. Ooh, is he going to ask us something else? Then he asks them, but who do you say that I am? Peter, being the one in the crowd always eager to have the others know he was all in, replied, you are the Christ. That famous line from Peter, you are the Christ, is so typical of Peter, isn't it? Putting it all out there and making sure there is no mistake about what he thinks. There's no well, some say you might be the Messiah. Maybe. Perhaps. Possibly. Of course, it's just chatter. You know how people are. <laughs> no, you are the Christ. Now, can you imagine what the other disciples walking along behind him might have been whispering to each other? <sighs> Here he goes again. He's going to get us all in trouble. He needs to keep his Thoughts to himself is what he needs to do. <laughs> Which of the disciples are you like? Any Peters out there? Hmm? Here's another question. What do you think Jesus was thinking when Peter was so direct and out there? On one hand, he was spot on. He'd recognised who Jesus was and was willing to go on record saying so. But on the other hand, he really didn't get the big picture and what Jesus being the Christ actually meant. You can read that part of the story later. It's in the same chapter, just a few sentences further on. One of the things that helps me not to worry too much about what people are saying about me is to try to live my life in such a way that if anyone is talking about me, they'll quickly recognise who Jesus is too. Just like Peter did. If we're really serious about what we say we believe, isn't it the right thing to do to say it? I mean, in plain terms, so that there is no doubt. What do you think? Do you, like me, really not mind what people are saying or talking about because what they say will just lead them to an inspector walking into the room with their hands in the air. Imitation, they say, is the highest form of flattery. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do because you are his dear children. Until next time, Goodbye.